because it ain't holy because you just think it's holy. It's holy because somebody praised the Lord there. That's when you got to just take off your shoes. There you go. This is what my spirit's doing right now. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Hey guys, we're Pastors Tim and Barbara Rigdon of The Well at New Covenant. We're so excited that you've decided to tune in with us and we sure hope that you will be blessed by it. Hey Amen. This is your watching. Yes. We want you to realize that God has something for you to receive today. Yes. And we believe that with our heart or we wouldn't be streaming it. So we're yes. believing God for you. We're praying for you yes, to be are. touched, whether it be a song or through the word. And as we say around here, watch, watch as you, you are, are you, you won't, won't leave the, the same. same. Are you thirsty? Do you want more? Are you tired of church in the norm? Are you ready for more? Then you're at the right place. Welcome to the well. Let's welcome Jesus this morning.
welcome you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles, if you've been hearing the same old voices and the same old lies, if you've been trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life.
In the eye of the storm, you remain in control. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. When the solid ground is falling out from underneath my feet Between the black skies and my red eyes I can barely see When I realize I've been sold out by my friends and my family Yes, I can feel the rain reminding me In the eye of the Remain in control. Sing it to you this morning. In the middle of the war, you guard my soul. You alone are the anchor when my sails are torn. Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. Praise God. When my hopes and dreams are far from me I'm running out of faith I see the future I picture slowly fade away when the tears of pain and heartaches are pouring down my face yes I find my peace in Jesus name in the eye of the storm you remain doctor says I've only got a few months left it's like a bitter pill I'm swallowing I can barely take a breath when addiction steals my baby girl there's nothing I can do yes my only hope is to trust in you trust me Lord in the eye of the storm you remain in Your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm. 
shepherd. I have all that I need. Yes, he lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. Yes, he, does. he guides me along right paths, yes, he does. bringing honor to his name. Yes, he does. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, yes. I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Yes. of the storm you remain in control in the middle of the war you guard my soul you alone are the anchor when my sails are torn your love surrounds me in the eye of the storm Jesus, praise him. He's in our storm this morning. Praise God. Just sing this little chorus to him. Praise God. To worship you.
getting ready to do our tithes right now and Pastor Tim asked me to do it and I was thinking down back there at the back about you know what does our tithes give us what does God do for us and I just got to thinking that um, so many times we are so unappreciative for all the things that God does for us daily and here in a minute in his sermon he's going to talk about fire trucks a little bit and things like that well I've been a fireman for a long time and uh, thinking about the things that we have makes me think about some of the, of the alarms I've been to where a man took his last breath and what he would give for that one more breath Went to a car wreck one time. That little boy, he said, my mama's dead, ain't she? And what he would give for days to have his mother back. But you want to know what your tithes give you? It gives you your prayers answered. And it gives you that one more breath. And that one more step when you're crippled. And all the things that you wish you had that you don't realize you have it daily. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, Lord, so much for the things that we don't seem to appreciate that you give us daily, every day. And when you understand what all those things are, it's so hard to, to thank you for it because you realize how much it means that, that you just can't give enough thanks for it. So Lord, we just come to you today. I hope everybody here can understand what I'm trying to say. I mean, those two instances weren't the only two I've been to, but there's been lots of them. And all those people just wish they could have one more breath. And I just thank you, Lord, right now for the breaths, for the steps, for everything that you give me that I don't appreciate. Amen. I've got a word that's been so common to you for all your life and you've heard it. And I've even asked different people, I asked my wife during the week, I said, How, what would you say that uh, the... Uh, what would you say the definition of this word is? And it's partially right. And the word is this, Hosanna. 
Now, Hosanna, and we know this being Palm Sunday, this, you know, that when he come to town, it's in Hosanna to the highest, you know, Hosanna to the kingdom. You know, and it does mean praise, joy, all these things. And even last night, I got a phone call late last night when we got home for Brent. He was getting off from work. And I told him, I, I said, I'm preaching on a word, Hosanna. And he goes, uh, what does that exactly mean? And so we've got a partial understanding. But when I caught the fullness of this word, Man, it just rocked my world this week. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it shook me out of my tree with it. But let me read you the definition of Hosanna. <laughs> Hosanna is an expression of joy and praise, but not just any joy or any praise. It's an expression of joy and praise for deliverance granted. For deliverance. <laughs> now, when we say deliverance, the first thing people want to think about is, well, brother, I ain't demon-possessed. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. I've been delivered from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death. Glory to God. Why? Because I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Yes. And when we realize that we've been, re we've been delivered or redeemed or bought back from poverty, uh, sickness, and spiritual death, then it brings a whole new revelation. You start to understand who you are, that you're a king's kid. Come on. Yes. And when you're a king's kid, you've got to act like a king's kid. Act like a king's kid. A king's kid, you know, you think if the king had the ability to heal you or the king had the ability to keep you from being uh, poor and broke or the king had the ability to keep you out of hell and you were his son or your daughter, would you not think that he would do everything within his power to accomplish those things? Yes. Well, guess what? He does have all those things. He does have the power to heal your body. He does have the power, glory to God, to save you from hell. He does have the power, the, 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 the power to break poverty off your life and bless you in all things. But the problem is we've sought the, the healer, uh, the, the healing more than we sought the healer. We've sought the blesser, uh, the blessing more than the blesser. You know? And we've sought heaven more than we've sought God. And when we get into this concept and we start saying, you know, because we see and we get these problems and we have life slaps us up beside the head and all these things begin to manifest that all of a sudden we get so focused on me, 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 my problem, my problem, my problem, then all of a sudden we can't see what God's doing around about us. Hallelujah. How many knows that God will send somebody along the way that don't necessarily agree with you? <laughs> He'll send somebody along the way to rub you a little wrong. Why? Because it reveals your true character. It reveals who you really are in God. Are you really what you say you are or are you not? Hallelujah. But see, what God's doing is trying to reveal to you that you, he's not done with you yet, that he's got more that he wants to pour out to you, that he wants to bless you. He, you know, God ain't letting people get sick for the sake of getting sick. He said it's for the glory of God. God don't get glory in sickness. God gets glory in healing somebody. God don't, God don't get glory in you being broke. God gets glory in you being blessed. And you... And some say this, I know right now you say it in your mind, well, that's a prosperity preacher. That's one of them prosperity preachers. Name it, claim it, blab it, and grab it. You can call me whatever you want to. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, my Bible still says that he, wants, that he told uh, Abraham, he said, I'm going to take you out of a country in Genesis 12. And I'm going to take you to a place you've not been to yet. <laughs> Amen. A land you know not of. <laughs> And I'm paraphrasing some of this, but you can go back and look. It's, it's Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. But he told Abraham, he said, I'm going to take you to a place you know not of. And he said, there I'm going to bless you. Amen. How many knows that sometimes we've got to go someplace we ain't never yes. been before before we're going to get blessed? Yes. And that ain't always in the physical realm. It's in the spiritual realm. That God will take you to places you ain't never reached before. He'll take you through some situations you've never been before. Why? Because he wants to bless you there. But he said, not only that, but he said, I'm going to bless you so you can be a bless Blessing. Amen. And see, that's the key to all this thing. It ain't about accumulation. I heard Kenneth Copeland say this years ago, that true prosperity is not about accumulation. It's about constant flow. Right. It's a constant flow of his blessings. That when we realize that God has blessed me to be a blessing, you know? God has healed me to be a witness of his healing yes. to speak it into somebody else so they can get healed. Do you understand it? You think sometimes, I gave this example last night. Uh, Brother David Oakley, he battled cancer three times in his brain. But glory to God, God forbid I have to face cancer ever in my lifetime. I pray I'm the healed of God and I walk in divine healing, not just divine health. I mean divine health, not just divine healing. But if I needed prayer, I'm going to ask him to pray. Why? Because he's overcome it by the blood of the Lamb and the word of his testimony three times. Come on. Yes. I pray to God I never have to face heart situations. Brother Johnny May, how many heart casts do you have to go through? I don't even know. 
I mean, he used to call me, say, John, Anna called me, say, Johnny's got another heart cat. And I was like, okay, I'll be up there in a minute. <laughs> it got to where it was a normal thing. I mean, he was a plaque producing machine, glory to God. Open heart surgery, so I said, but glory to God, he come through every one of them. And every time when I go in there, Brother Johnny said, Brother, I'm just praying, man, I don't understand this. He goes, Well, somebody up here needs Jesus. <laughs> he took the opportunity where you would murmur and complain and compl- cry out and say, Oh, God, why has this happened to me again? Why, God? Why, God? Why, God? He said, God, you must going to use me for some purpose here. <laughs> Because I'm going to tell you what, I don't care who you are. If you're in the medical field, you're just sitting up there in the waiting room, whatever it may be, and you see somebody that's faced this umpteen times, and they're still going through it, and they're still standing strong, giving God glory. All of a sudden, you start saying, you know what? I want what that man's got. I want that man to pray for me. See, you don't realize it, but see, when we take the circumstance that we're being dealt to, and we take the troubles and the trials that's come against us, and we just murmur and complain about it, instead of saying, okay, God, how are you going to get glory in this? How is Hosanna going to show up? How, is, how are we going to uh, sing praises and joy for the deliverance that's been granted? How are we going to do that? It's when we start to not focus on us, and we start to focus on, God, what do you want to do through me? Because, see, God doesn't want to just bless you. He don't want to just pour it out on you. He wants to pour it out through you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We're to be a conduit of his flow. You know, and I, I preached this last year on Palm Sunday. You know, uh, Jesus came into town on a donkey. And, I, you know, we're just the donkeys he rides in on. And we got to realize that. When you realize your purpose in life is to carry the anointing of God on your back and then to deliver it to anybody and everybody and expose each and every person you can to the grace of God, the anointing of God, and the love of God, all of a sudden, your life changes because you realize you've got purpose in your life. Amen? Some of y'all put your purpose in your careers. Even some of you put it in your kids. God bless you and your kids and your grandkids. I got all those. I love all of them. But my purpose is not just for that. My purpose is to share the love of God and the care and to love on people and to love God and to show forth the anointing of God. That's my purpose. Well, you're a preacher. Every one of you are called of God. Amen. <laughs> Every one of you are called to God. You're called to be that donkey that carries the anointing, that carries the blessing, that carries the grace of God, that carries those things to the Lord. Amen. Every one of you, uh, every one of you young people, you're called of God. It don't matter how young, how old, whatever, you're called of God. You know, the Word of God says in John 12, 12, the next day a great multitude had come to the feast. And when they had heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, see, Romans 10, 17 says, Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When we hear of Jesus, when they heard about Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, in other words, they're saying, Hey, Jesus is coming to town, glory to God. And when Jesus comes to town, it says, They took branches of palm trees, and they went out to meet him, and they cried out, Hosanna! What are they saying? Hey, I'm praising you because you're my deliverer. You have delivered me. You have set me free. Deliverance has been granted. But I didn't read you all the definition an expression of joy and praise for deliverance granted or an expression of joy and praise for deliverance anticipated yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh that kicked another gear in it whoa glory to God there we go because <laughs> see it ain't just what God's done for you already it's what he's about to do for you come on because my God ain't dead He's still alive. He's come up out of the grave, glory to God. Oh, God. Woo! Hallelujah. And because he lives, he lives. Hallelujah. Because of that, glory to God, I don't have to go through circumstances and he can deliver me from these things. He can deliver me from my sickness, my disease. He can deliver me from poverty. He can deliver me from lack. He can deliver me from addictions. He can deliver me from whatever it may be that's hindering me from my purpose and the plans of God that he has for my life. But when I realize Hallelujah. That he's called me for such a time as this. Glory to God. I got to find me a branch. I got to find me a flag. Everybody says, why are y'all waving flags? Hosanna! Because our deliverer lives. Glory to God. Because he delivered me from some things. But glory to God, he's about to do some more. He ain't done. Hallelujah. I don't know about your God. Hosanna! Glory to God. I can't. I was at McDonald's last night, and I just, Hosanna! (laughs) Because I'm proclaiming the deliverance of the Lord. The deliverer is alive. The deliverer, not just what he's done, but what he's about to do. 
Now see, you may have known this, this definition, but it's new to me, so I'm, Hosanna! Glory to God, it just kind of comes out. I'm getting spiritual Tourette's tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Hosanna. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. See, they took branches and palm leaves. In other words, they just said, you know what? I'm going to grab whatever I can. You know, and I'm going to wave it to him because I'm honoring my deliverer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm honoring. There you go. I'm honoring the one who delivered me. But you know what? I'm honoring the one that's about to do some more. Yeah. <laughs> So you say, why do you wave that flag? My question to you is, why don't you? <laughs> you all in your religious mindset say, well, I don't know about that flag waving up there. <laughs> I need me a flag. Throw me a flag, please. <laughs> I got to do it. Yeah! <laughs> this is what... <laughs> This is what I seen in the spirit realm right then. <laughs> I need another one. Hallelujah. <laughs> I need two. Thank you. Oh, match him. Say it. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 I'm usually playing piano, so I don't get to do this. Hallelujah. <laughs> Here's what I seen in the spirit realm. When you're waving... These flags and your palm leaves, your hankies, your whatever to the Lord, your hands waving them to the Lord, and you're crying out, Hosanna, joy and praise to the one who delivered me and deliverance has been granted, and to that deliverance that's been anticipated. You know what I feel like we're doing? Holy Spirit. directing the Holy Ghost. You're saying, here I am, Lord. Come, 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 Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. got to stop everything say, I'm taking a praise break. Yes, Lord. I'm going to take a praise break here. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. I told you you got a little wild last night. Hallelujah. We ain't done. Hallelujah. Seth, I got to get my breath back. Hallelujah. I've crossed the half century, Mark, so y'all wait on me. Lord, let my body catch up to what my spirit's doing right now. Because <laughs> inside, I'm doing backflips. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, come up here. Get up here on top. <laughs> this is what my spirit's doing right now. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> Take that, devil. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> 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 
And all of you that are religious are already saying, where's that door? Where is the door in this place? Turn them lights on and let me out. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is going on here? What's going on here? Somebody's about to get free today that ain't been free. You've been bound up for too long. <laughs> Look here. Then Jesus, when he found a young donkey, he sat on it as it was written. And Zechariah 9 talks about it also. But it says, fear not, daughter of Zion. See, I, I believe that's a word to you today. That's Don't right. get scared. It's just Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. I ain't scared. <laughs> I'll, fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, yes. sitting on a donkey. Hallelujah. On a donkey's coat. Amen. Said, and his disciples did not understand these things at first. <laughs> what amazes me is people who had been with him for all this time, for three and a half years, the ones that were closer to him, still didn't understand the concept of what was happening. Amen. Says, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and, they had, and that they had done these things to him. See, there's the concept. <laughs> You can hang out with religious folks all you want to. You can be in church all you want to. They had hung out with Jesus Christ himself for three and a half years, and they still didn't understand everybody. Woo! They still didn't understand the palm trees and the palm leaves and the Hosanna! Because there was still a religious mindset that was blinding their eyes. But all of a sudden... Then they remembered when? When Jesus was glorified. Yeah. See, if you begin to glorify Jesus, it opens the eyes of the, even the religious mind. Yes. Even those that have been caught up in tradition for a long time and say, well, I've never seen that before. I've never seen that. When you begin to glorify the Lord of Lords and King of Kings, when you begin to say, it don't matter what you think, I'm going to praise Him, glory to God, then all of a sudden, something changed. Eyes of understanding are open to people. Hallelujah. I remember hearing a story Rob Parsley told this years ago about Norval Hayes. He said he got in, the, he went to Israel over to Jerusalem and he said he got up in the upper room there. And he said they just got in the upper room and said, man, the Holy Ghost just started moving. I mean, the real upper room, you know what I'm talking about? I said he just began to praise God and stuff like that. And said this little priest come around the corner going, shh, 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 hushing it. Quiet. This is a holy place. <laughs> this is a holy place. Be quiet. <clears throat> it said, Norval Hayes looked at him and says, Brother, this ain't nothing but a bunch of rocks and stones and cement. He said, What makes it holy is when I do this. <laughs> what makes it holy is when God's people begin to honor him in spirit and truth. When you begin to glorify Jesus and it opens your understanding. Because it ain't holy because you just think it's holy. It's holy because somebody praised the Lord there. Yeah. This is nothing but an old bank building that's 115 years old. But all of a sudden when God's people begin to worship Him and glorify Jesus, Lord of God, He becomes holy ground. It becomes holy. It becomes holy. That's when you got to just... Take off your shoes. There you go. Ah. He told Moses, he said, take off your shoes. The place where you're at is holy ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right, buddy. Raise your children up in a way. Even the kids are throwing their shoes. Hallelujah. They're still coming. <laughs> we'll become even more undignified than this. Hallelujah. You think it's crazy? Hallelujah. And I sense this as soon as your shoe hit up here, Todd. Get ready. This is what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. He told them that when they got to the place, he says, throw your shoes over the fence, over the border. And they said, where your shoes land? He says, you're going to possess it. Yes. You're going to possess it. 
I believe as you toss your shoe up here that God says you're going to start to possess some things of the altar. Hallelujah. In a new realm, God's about to do some things through your yes. ministry and through the ministry he's called you into. And you've been waiting. You've been in a holding pattern. But God said, hey, it's time to go possess some yeah. things. I've got, I've gave you ideas. I've gave you vision for the new year. And you've just kind of been waiting upon the Lord. The Lord said, it's time. It's time. It's stepping out. Hallelujah. Because you're walking on holy ground this time. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're not walking in ground of, of, of accusations. You're not walking in ground of man's control. You're not walking in grounds of religious mindset. But God said, I've set you free and whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Hosanna! Hosanna! Oh, my Lord. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we said in the prayer room, we're going to another level this morning. Yes. God's going to take it. <laughs> See what some of y'all think is foolishness. <laughs> God said he'd take the foolish things of the world to confound the yes. wise. <laughs> I want God more than I want your approval. <laughs> I want God more than I need your okie dokie. I want God to show up. And I feel Him today. And I ain't ashamed of you. And I ain't ashamed of me. And I'm not ashamed of any of this stuff. Now if I go back and watch it on video, I might get ashamed. That's when I don't go back and watch myself. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ because it's the power. Amen. The dunamis power. Jesus. To those that are saved. Hallelujah. See, his disciples, they didn't understand. Why is everybody going crazy with palm leaves? Even those that have been with him. But when he was glorified, they remembered. That's right. I want our young people, I want our children, I, I, I can guarantee you, when they get down there in that basement, you think, what's going on? Holy Spirit's going on. Hallelujah. Why? Because we need the Holy Spirit ministry in our lives more than we need to go through little rituals of things. Hallelujah. We've done it certain ways and said, okay, you do this, you do that, then this happens, and then we dismiss and we go home. And they don't leave change. I'd rather see young people that lay before the Lord and cry out to God than to worry about going to an ice cream party. I'd rather see young people that are hungry for God, young people that say, hey, pastor, can we show up early to pray for Saturday night service? It's happening. They come and ask me. They say, we just want to come and pray. I said, we'll open the doors. You come and pray. And they'll come and they'll just pray. And they'll start at sometimes 2 o'clock for a 6 o'clock service. Yep. Yes. Right. Hadn't had seen many adults hanging out there. Good. Boy, it got quiet then. <laughs> I'm not saying that out of, out of spanking you. I, I'm saying it as there's a hunger there and it changes lives. That's right. Because you're not going to change lives by just saying a few scriptures over some, reading some scripture. You're not going to say, change lives by singing a few kumbaya songs and then you go home. You're going to change lives when you get in the presence of God. When you spend time in His presence. Because in His presence is the fullness of joy and the restitution of all things. Hallelujah. See, that's why here on, on Sunday mornings and on Saturday nights especially, we want to hang out in His presence. Because guess what? I can't heal you, I can't save you, and I can't deliver you. But I know the one who can. Okay? And he wants to show up in your life. But he comes when he's glorified. Yeah, that's right. yeah. And the understanding and your remembrance, you remember what I used to be or what I used to have or what I experienced once in my life comes when he's glorified. Yes. And you get in the atmosphere of glorification of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. When you get in a little, Hosanna! Yeah. Then all of a sudden something starts to happen. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Wow. And so we got to keep focused on it. It says, therefore... This is what started amazing me. It's like they tossed this scripture in the middle of this, telling about Jesus coming to town. It says, Therefore the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out. So all of a sudden it's gone another direction. They're saying, hey, there's a bunch that was going. It ain't just the 12 disciples. There's another group that's been following him ever since he called Lazarus out of the tomb. Amen. Amen. And I told them last night. You got, we got this little picture. We get in our little picture Bibles as kids, and we hear the story of Lazarus and coming out of the grave, and it's a, yay, it's a good little story to teach our kids. And that's the problem. We've taught stories and not let the Spirit of God speak lessons to us. 
Amen. But here's the thing. It was not one little tomb right there. It was a graveyard. That's right. Do you understand? <laughs> they didn't just all of a sudden say, okay, we're going to bury him right here in the middle of everybody. <laughs> he was in a graveyard. There was all kinds of people who died years and years before it. But yet Jesus walks up there and, and Jesus understood the power of his word so much that he didn't just say, come forth! Because it had been like the rapture. <laughs> the graves would all have opened up. The stones would all have rolled away. No, he said, Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> he spoke to the individual need. Now I say that to say this. You've got to realize something. Some of y'all got individual needs. That's the reason he's saying, Luke! And then calls out the thing. Because he knows your name. And he knows the specifics of your life. He knows your needs. He knows all the circumstances yeah. going on. He, he's not surprised by the, the, the things that have been manifested. And he knows that he can trust you with That's tragedy. Right. Yes. <laughs> he can trust you with tragedy. What do you mean, Pastor? He can trust you with tragedy because you're going to trust him through the tragedy. Right. You understand? Because why is that? I don't want no tragedy. I don't want this. It rains on the just and the unjust. And many are the afflictions of the righteous, but my God shall deliver you out of them all. We know all the scripture, but here's the, here's the reality of this. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. They testified. Yes. They began to testify. They began to say, hey, oh, y'all waving them branches and stuff. Let me tell you something about this dude. He called a man out his name and he got up out of a grave and he come out of that grave and they said, loose him and let him go, glory to God. Uh -huh. He once was dead, came to life because of the words that this man spoke. Yes. Yes. They begin to testify. You overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the word of the testimony. You know those scriptures. Do you realize something? As they begin to testify of the wonder-working power of God. And they begin to speak yes. forth. Look what the Lord has done. That's the reason God has trusted you with tragedy. Because it's not the tragedy is not your end. The sickness is not into death. Glory to God. God don't get glory in the sickness. He gets glory in the healing. So yes. therefore, when you go through situation, circumstance, it's so you can come out the other side with a testimony saying, look what the Lord has done. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. And they bore witness for him. And look what verse 18 said. For this reason, the people also met him. Because they had heard of this sign. The people come out to meet him because somebody was not ashamed to say, look what the Lord has done. Look what he did for Lazarus. Look what he's done for me. Look what he's doing. Yes. When we get to the place that we're not ashamed of the move of God, we might actually see a move of God in our lives. When we get to the place where we're not ashamed of the move of God. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. That's a Selah moment. <laughs> Let me put it to you this way. <coughs> Barb and I were down at <coughs> Vanderbilt <coughs> Hospital a few weeks ago. Little Kirsten and her mom, Christina, and they was doing the, the, the kidney transplant. Then there was Susie down there, her and John was down there. Brother Randy, <coughs> it came down to be a part and supportive of everybody. <coughs> Appreciate everybody that was down there supporting, praying for them, all those that's up here. But if we're down there, and I don't remember if I'm standing outside the building, if I'm walking in the building, if I'm sitting in the car in the parking garage or where it was. But somewhere down there, the Lord spoke to me this, and he says, I'm taking you into a season, talking about the church, of documented miracles. Yes. Documented miracles. <laughs> now, why is that important? Because sometimes we just wipe things off and say, well, really? Is that really what? Like, when you hear... Uh, last night, a young man saying, "We, everybody prayed for my grandfather and said he ain't got cancer no more. And we're all just like, yay, we praise the Lord right there. But how many went out bearing witness to anybody you can? Man, this boy's grandfather got healed of cancer the other night. Yes. Come on. Did you hear? Because if we truly believe, Come on. It's good. Come on. Yes. we would find every sick person, That's right. every lost person, that we could and say, man, you got to get up here. You're right. ever, not because of our church, not because of Pastor yes. Tim, Pastor Bart, not because of the worst team, not because of this program, that program, but because Jesus is showing up and changing people's lives. Come on. That's right. That's good. How many people went around telling about Chase and the miracle that took place in his life? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've got to learn to bear witness yes, to the miracles amen. of God amen. because it's that, for this reason, the people met him. 
The people came out. Why? Because Jesus was being lifted up. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men into me. When we learn to give testimony or witness to the things that God's already doing, see, what he's already done, the Hosanna of the deliverance that's granted, I believe until we start bearing witness to those things and giving him glory for those things, we're not going to see the Hosanna of anticipating deliverance. Amen? We need to give him glory for what he's already done. Amen? We need to be telling people what he's already done. Hallelujah. But these people, for this reason, the people also met him because they heard. What? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. They heard that he had done this sign. He had done this miracle. Now, and see, you got to look at this scripture. The way it's doing right here, man, it's just, it's just changing everything. Because Jesus riding in on a donkey, everybody's saying, yay, yay, glorified. And the disciples, they remembered and their understandings opened up and all this. And it should go straight into him going before the Sanhedrin court. But it don't. It stops along the way and said, and there was a bunch of folks following him who had seen him do a miracle with Lazarus and call him from the dead. And they, they bore witness and they began to tell everybody in the crowd about it. And for that reason, the people also started running out there to meet him because they heard of this sign. Yes. <laughs> I believe today the reason we're seeing churches that's got so many empty pews and empty seats in them is because we're not bearing witness to the wonderful working power of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. We're not bearing witness to the miracles of God. Hallelujah. And I heard one person told me one time, a minister said, well, you don't want to go out telling everybody if God works a miracle in your church. I said, really? He said, no, you don't want to do that. He said, because everybody will start coming. It's a true story. <laughs> Everybody start coming and says, what if they all come to get a miracle and then God don't want to work a miracle that night? <laughs> That's what I was told as a young minister. You know what I told him? Don't bother me because it ain't my reputation on the line. Because I'm not telling anybody come and I'll heal you. I'm telling come and let Jesus heal you. So I ain't, my hands is clean. <laughs> I'm just telling you, he's here. <laughs> it's up to you, amen, to tell others. It's up them to have faith and believe God that God can touch them. That's the reason I'm not worried about my reputation. I lost it a long time ago anyway. <laughs> but my reputation, because I'm not trying to get a reputation as a faith healer. You hear me? I'm not trying to build a ministry that we're faith in. I'm not trying to build a ministry. I'm trying to build the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. When I found out, though, if I bear witness to his miracles and the testimony of what he's doing, glory to God, people are going to come out to meet him because they heard about the signs that was done. Come on. Amen. So you tell everybody, hey, somebody was healed of cancer last week. Hallelujah. You need to come to church this Sunday or this Saturday night. Glory to God. Tell them to come on because guess what? I still believe God's got enough left for them, too. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this reason, they came out to meet him. But look here, the Pharisees, that's talking about the religious set, sect of the time. Hallelujah. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, and I love this. <laughs> they're saying it amongst themselves. They're saying it to each other. <laughs> well, you see that we're not accomplishing anything. <laughs> that's what everybody said. Well, let me. <laughs> I don't know what we can do. You see that we're not accomplishing nothing here. <laughs> we're trying to stop Jesus. We're trying to stop the miracles. We're trying to stop the flow. We're trying to stop everybody following him. We're trying to do all these things, and we're not accomplishing anything right now. Then they turned around in their own frustration with their own situation. They're like, look, the world's going after him now. Have y'all ever seen that? <laughs> look there. Well, we ain't accomplishing nothing. And look now, the world's going after him. Exactly. Yes. When he starts to move and we start to give him glory and we start to seek his face and we start to seek his face, not his hand, what he can do for us, all of a sudden he begins to show out, show up and show out and the Spirit of God begins to change people's lives and people begin to get healed and people begin to be saved and people begin to be delivered because Hosanna, the deliverer, has come forth. Yes. Then all of a sudden, yes, the religious minds have to say, we can't accomplish nothing. Matter of fact, look, the world is going after him. That's right. <laughs> the world's going. See, that's what I want to hear because, see, it's not about filling this altar up. It's not about what's going to happen inside this building. It's what's going to happen in the world. Yeah. See, I, I told this last night, and some people may take, may take this out of context. Said, I'm not being ungrateful, okay? <laughs> Hear my heart. But I'm not satisfied with an altar full. Yes. 
I don't want to see just this church change. I want to see the church down the street and the church over here and the yes. church over there. I want to see cities change. I want to see nations change. I want to see the glory of God fall on this world and change it once and for all because for, it's a preparation for him coming back. Yes. See, it's not me being ungrateful. It's because I see the bigger plan yes. that God has. Right. You need to see that he's got, it's not about us. It's about him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look here. Matthew 21, verse 9 says this. Then the multitude went out before him, followed and cried, saying, Hosanna! <laughs> I just love that word. Uh, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the high, in the highest. <laughs> Look here, we're going to get into it right quick here, and we've got to quit. It says, and when he had come to Jerusalem, <coughs> when Jesus yeah. come to town, yeah. all the city was moved. <laughs> That's what Jesus, I'm talking about, Jesus. folks. That's the reason when I say I'm not satisfied with an altar full at New Covenant Christian Center. I'm not satisfied with an altar full at the well. I want to see the city moved by the power of God. I want to see nations changed by the power of God. I want everybody driving up and down Main Street here at 110 East Main Street and they drive by and says, who is this? That's what it says. And when he had come to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? Uh, what is this? What's going on? Something's going on. So the multitude said, This is Jesus. <coughs> this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth the Galilee. See, when everybody wonders about this and wonders about that, and the city begins to be moved, and they're saying, Who is this? Or what is this? Here's your answer. This is Jesus. The prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. This is Jesus. This is Jesus. This is not just a little move of God. This is not just a moment. This is not just a season. This is Jesus. See, I believe the hand of God lifts off of every great move of God. We've seen it lift off at different times, and I believe each and every time it's because man touches the anointing. That man starts to take credit. That man starts to think they did something to deserve it. <laughs> Amen. Oh, we prayed, we fasted, we did this, we did that. <laughs> when we realize that we're just a donkey. And when people ask and you say, it's Jesus. Yes. That changes things. I believe the longevity of a move of God depends upon the humility of those that are involved in it. Absolutely. That's good. Yes. That's good. And say that again. The longevity of a move of God depends upon the humility of those involved in it. Amen. Those who God's entrusted at one time or another to bear the anointing, to yes. bear it when they realize they're just a donkey. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. It changes things. Jesus. It changes things. It changes lives. <laughs> see, we're seeing that manifest and we see those things, but it ain't about us. It's about Hosanna. Yes, it is. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. In case you forgot. <clears throat> Hosanna. An expression of joy and praise for deliverance granted or anticipated. <clears throat> I don't know which category you're in or if you're in both like me. <laughs> but we need to give him praise for that which he has granted us already. But I'm going to give him praise for that that I'm anticipating. I'm going to praise him for what's about to happen. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Amen. Because I believe that God ain't done. Oh, I believe God ain't done. And I believe he's got a purpose in everything that we're going through. I, I believe that, that sometimes even when we get off track, he's like, you know what? I'm still here. I believe when we're not walking where we need to be, he says, I'm still here. But I'm going to nudge you. I'm going to bring you back over here because I've got more that I want to do for your life. I'm not done with you yet. I'm not done with you yet. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for your word. It doesn't go out void. For the cops, just what's sent to do and is pleasing your sight. Folks, we want to thank you for tuning in with us today. We hope that something has been said or done here today that has touched you, and we just pray for you right now. We want to lead a prayer right now as we close this service out. Amen. So just right there, if something's touched your yes. heart, if uh, something's dealing with your heart, whether yes. it be 
to come to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, or if you've known Him, you've drawn away from right. Him, and you're wanting to draw back. If you need healing to your yes. body, if you need a touch, whatever it may be, deliverance, if you need to be set free from yes, drugs, sir. alcohol, addictions, right. God is a mountain-moving yes, God. He He's still in the saving business. He's still in the delivering business. Yes. And so we want to pray with you. So just join with us as yes, we join our Jesus. faith with you. Yes, Lord God. Jesus, we ask you yes. right now that whoever's watching out there, yes, Lord, Lord, whatever their need may be, God, that you meet them right now. Lord, that you send your Holy Spirit to go down there wherever they're at, whether they're watching on their phone or on their computer or a Roku. Lord, that you just touch them right there and just embrace them with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Lord, we ask for the convicting power of the Holy Spirit to change their life. Lord, we ask for the encouragement of the Holy Ghost, Lord, just to begin to reach down and lift them up and real, them realize that there's a purpose in their life. There's a purpose in the situation they're going through. There's even a purpose in your pain. And God, for those that need healing in their body, Lord, we pray that the divine touch of the Holy Spirit, yes, that, Lord, you touch them at the wherever they are, whatever the pain yes, is, God. whatever the sickness or disease. Lord, you said that by your stripes yes. they are healed. Yes. And Lord, we believe you and your word and we trust you when you're with your word. And Lord, I speak to addictions. I yes. speak against those yes. that are struggling with addictions in their life. Lord, I ask you to break off that yoke of bondage. You said you sent the anointing to break, annihilate, yes. and destroy every yoke of bondage. And Lord, we speak for them to be touched right now. And God, we give you glory for what you're doing in people's lives ahead of time. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 If you've been touched today, if you accepted Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, or you rededicated your life, if you were healed, if whatever the case may be, if you were set free, won't you drop us a line uh, on our website or on our apps and let us know, give us a praise report of what's mm -hmm. went on in your life. Or if you have a prayer request, send in your prayer request there. We pray over every prayer request. We have a team that believes God with you and will continue to believe you. So there again, we thank you for watching. Remember, tune in the next time. Watch as you are. You, you won't, won't be the, the same. same.